one of the most important parts of Reich's story that has never been taken seriously is his laboratory science. And I think it's pretty clear that a very large amount of the barriers are not necessarily scientific. Up in the lab, that's where we did our experimental work. And I was amazed by some of the stuff I was seeing. The most important thing about Reich, in my opinion, was that he was a revolutionary physician. From the very beginning, Reich thought that there was only one basic drive. The apex of sexuality, it's the orgasm. Reich went there as a very, as a first. In 1927, he dedicated his book on the orgasm to his beloved teacher, Freud. The term sexual politics basically originated with Reich. He's also a pioneer of body therapy. And Reich was the first person to introduce breathing into psychoanalytic therapy. Nobody talks about breathing the way Reich talks about breathing. Under the Nazis, no other psychoanalyst books and writings were banned to the extent that Reichs were. Wilhelm Reich took a clear stand against fascism, and his name was on the Gestapo list. That he undertook such a radical position and paid for it at such great personal sacrifice has made him a role model for me to this day. There was a lot of gossip about Reich. He was thought of as kind of a quack. Everybody was afraid of him in town. They would call him a communist, they would call him a Nazi. One of the things I remember hearing as a child was that he had a, um, a machine gun on the roof. One gentleman asked me, actually asked me this. He said, is it true that when you work with the mice, you have to take off all your clothes and wear this sheer white uniform? You know, I had made the prediction that if Reich goes to jail, he'll die there. I said, it'll be like putting an eagle in a cage. Wilhelm Reich and my parents did not think that he would lose that trial. When I tell people that his books were burned, they said, where, in Europe? I said, no, in the United States. As late as 1960, they were still after these books. I do remember them coming to burn the, the books. All these books were just thrown into the trough, and then this thing came down and grabbed them and threw them into the fire. Reich was clearly a brilliant person who could see many things that other people just were unaware of. It would be very good to deconstruct what we think we know about Wilhelm Reich and start all over again and ask the simple question, who was he? What was he really on to? If what Reich did was important, it's not just because he was a therapist and a really good one. He believed he had made some of the most important scientific contributions of the 20th century. The biggest mistake that the false narratives in the past have made is to dismiss the science out of hand. That's the most important thing this film has to contribute. An accurate and clear and understandable portrayal of Reich's science. The Cloudbuster. This device was designed in 1953 by an Austrian psychoanalyst named Wilhelm Reich. Wilhelm Reich proposed that the device could produce rain by manipulating what he called organ energy, or universal life force present in the atmosphere. The device consists of an array of parallel hollow metal tubes which are connected at the rear to a series of flexible metal hoses, and the open end of these hoses are placed in water. He claimed that pointing this device at a cloud would eventually cause the cloud to disperse, and that pointing it at an empty patch of sky would eventually cause a new cloud to form. He further claimed that it could also draw in clouds from great distances away, 
Later that year, he put the device to a test when blueberry farmers in Maine offered to pay him if he could end a drought that threatened the crop. The Weather Bureau had reportedly forecast no rain for several days when he began the experiment. He, along with three assistants, set up the device off the shore of Grand Lake, near Bangor Hydroelectric Dam. He operated the device for just over an hour, and according to a source in Ellsworth, the climate began changing later in the night, and then the following morning, it started raining. Witnesses stated that the clouds were very eerie, and the rain continued throughout the day. However, scientists remained skeptic about this and claimed that it was purely coincidence. In the late 1950s, Wilhelm switched his attention to UFOs, which he believed were spraying radiation in an attempt to destroy Earth. He claimed to see hostile alien spaceships hovering menacingly close to his laboratory. He and his son traveled in the deserted area of Arizona and used the device as space guns, aiming them at the sky in an attempt to drain energy. He sets it up in remote areas and it is shielded from all electromagnetic radiation, such as all radio and TV radiation, for instance. It can be influenced only by the etheric or bioplasmic pulses that influence plant and animal life. On October 29, 1971, and again in April 1972, on the Mojave Desert in California, intelligent communication was received. Dr. Lawrence at Ecola Institute showed us with his Stellatron that the alien intelligences of the UFO might be in cosmic communication by use of a high-level energy, which we know as etheric, bioplasmic, orgon, or nearly a hundred similar names but it is unrecognized in our science and in our civilization which runs and communicates on the energies of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uri Geller mentally directs his biological energy and that of other people and they bend metal keys. In the vicinity of UFOs, aircraft lose electrical control and instrumentation and without doubt their structural integrity is also affected by this energy which bends keys. Other more incredible things are happening. During a single year, for instance, nearly 10,000 head of farmers' livestock have been mutilated in an area from Texas to eastern Oregon and Washington. Police and agricultural scientists alike are helpless. No flying predator exists which mutilates an animal's tender parts or swallows it up completely, leaving behind a bare skeleton. UFOs can be blamed, says the University of Wyoming student newspaper. There is now striking evidence that the cause is not a configurated UFO spacecraft, but what is mistaken for a UFO is something just as new to science. Invisible flying predators, which can be photographed with the aid of an ultraviolet filter 18A and ectocolor film. This was first accomplished by Trevor James Constable, a UFO researcher for a quarter of a century. Constable, in Southern California, builds equipment which gathers orgon energy, or etheric, or biological energy. Years ago, he noted that his energy gathering devices attracted invisible critters. He also photographed them at 35,000 feet through an ultraviolet filter near a commercial jet. They were invisible to the pilot. This is an artist's drawing by Don Dixon of one of the frames of the research camera's film showing the invisible flying critter. Apparently, the predator sought by farmers and county sheriffs nationwide is the animal killer. The invisible flying predator. There seems no other explanation of what has happened to the thousands of mutilated animals. Once again, a new scientific door is opened, and through it we see invisible animals which can fly by degravitating themselves and which seem to live off the biological energy of other land-bound animals that may or may not have any connection with the spacecraft UFOs, but it seems they have been mistaken for configurated UFOs with their humanoid crewmen, bound on their separate mission of the study of the Earth's inhabitants by means of kidnappings and sample gathering 
of Earthman's devices. We are creating our own reality through temporal causality loops and radiation emissions of human thought into zero-point energy fields. These fields are also known as zero-point fields, the M-field and the morphic field. As I've described this in a previous documentary, I won't describe it here. Human thought radiation emissions given off into these fields create constructive and destructive interference. This is how relationships are formed. The greys supposedly have the ability to intercept these fields and project thoughts into our minds, manipulating our free will, making us carry out horrific acts. They do this as they feed off the negative energy given off by human subjects during the actions. The greys are able to make appearances in the third density giving us sightings. However, they hide within the fourth density to feed off our energy without us knowing it. These orbs are beyond the visible wavelength, making them invisible to the naked eye. However, they surround us right now. They have been captured on infrared camera many times. NASA is the most notable cause, but the Mexican military also caught them on camera. Many people on YouTube also caught these orbs on camera. They have been captured hundreds, if not thousands of times. Dr. Klaus Hinnemann, a former NASA employee, wrote a book called The Orb Project. In the book, he reported that under controlled conditions, using multiple cameras, it appeared that the orb showed some type of intelligence when asked to appear on camera by the photographer. When the Mexican military caught them on camera on March 5th, 2004, the pilots claimed they felt as if the orbs knew they were under surveillance. A man who captured these orbs on camera asked them to put on a show in which they replied to. Come on, give us a show, little curse. Wow. As the orbs resonate on a wavelength beyond visible light, it means they can see us, but we can't see them. So what are they? Trevor James Constable, a former Marine, was one of the first people to photograph these orbs. After reading several books about esoteric energy and doing research of his own, he decided to investigate, so set up ultraviolet and infrared cameras. He caught the same orbs on tape, translucent with a hole in the center. After reviewing his pictures and extending in further research, Trevor had come to a conclusion. He believes that orbs are an amoeba-like form of life which exist on Earth and in the universe beyond our sight. He also claimed when provoked, they become predatory. 